Here we're going to talk a little bit more about the sun. In order to understand the sun, there are certain aspects of the sun we need to understand. And the basic thing about the sun is what makes the sun into a sphere, into a star, the, the, the size that it is. And it actually is this way, that stars in general, like our sun, they display a balance of amazing forces. Some of the most amazing forces in the universe. One of them is gravity. So what happens is when a star begins to form, and stars are forming all the time in the universe, our sun is really not that old of a star, it's about 4.6 billion years old, and our universe has been around for 14 billion years, which means our sun didn't exist for almost the first 10 billion years of the existence of the universe. So where did the sun come from? Well, the sun collapsed from a nebula. So there was a nebula that for some reason collapsed in on itself to gravitational forces and some other forces involved to make the gravitational collapse start. But from a nebula, it turned into what we would call a protostar. So as a nebula collapses, gravity keeps on pushing more and more and the molecules get close and closer together. And eventually they form a spherical region, which we call a protostar. And the pressure begins to build up inside the protostar and heat begins to be generated. And as the protostar gets warmer and warmer, it begins to glow. It begins to radiate energy off into space. And as we will find out later, this radiation that goes out into space will then have a tremendous effect on how the solar system around that budding star, that protostar, begins to form. So the Earth was formed, and in part, the Earth was formed the way it was because this initial radiation of the protostar that began to differentiate the atoms in the solar system and began to make the terrestrial and the gas planets and then further out the extra, the extra uh, solar objects that are way out there that are mostly ice. Now, what then happened was the gravity continued to collapse, continued to collapse, continued to collapse the star, and eventually the star came down to the point where the density and the temperature at the center of the star became so hot that nuclear fusion began. And so once nuclear fusion began, we then got into a state where we can call it the, what we call the gravitational thermal equilibrium state of a star. At that point, as enormous amount of energy were beginning to be generated inside the core because of nuclear fusion, all that radiation that, that was generated began to push back against the force of gravity. So you have the force of gravity that want to push the sun into an ever smaller, smaller sphere. And then we have the radiation forces pushing back against that gravity. And at some point, the sun would then reach its equilibrium point, which would then keep the sun in its current state and size. Now, what would happen when the fusion process were to increase in velocity? Well, then, of course, more uh, Pressure would then be generated, more heat would be generated, and the star would then push back against gravity, and it would find a new equilibrium point as a larger star, or as a larger sun. If the activity in the center begins to decline, then less energy would be provided, less pressure pushing back would be provided, and gravity would begin to win over, and then the star would collapse into a small object until a new equilibrium point was found, and the star would be smaller. So the size of the star is really determined by this equilibrium between the gravitational forces trying to make it ever smaller, and the, the pushback of the radiation pushing back and finding that equilibrium point between them. Well, it turns out the density at the very center of the sun is about 150 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, to put that into perspective, water on Earth has a density, so density, and this is the symbol we use for density, by the way, it's the Greek letter rho, but the density for water is about one gram per cubic centimeter, so when you pull some water out of the ocean, the density is roughly one gram per cubic centimeter, which means the density at the center of the sun is 150 times that much. To give you some more comparisons, the density for iron is about eight grams per cubic centimeter, the density for mercury, which of course that's very, very dense, heavy uh, material, that liquid material, liquid metal, for mercury HD is about 13.6 grams per cubic centimeter. And finally, one of the most dense metals on the earth would be gold. So the density for gold, AU, uh, should be a small U, not a big U, if I want to do this correctly, there we go, is about 19.2 grams per cubic centimeter. So notice, Gold as dense and as heavy as it is, the sun is like seven or eight times as dense as gold is at the very center. And so you can see that these enormous pressure, this enormous gravitational pressure, push this gas, which essentially the sun is a big ball of gas, push it down to the density that is just absolutely enormous. And it's this density which then provides the temperature at the center of the sun, which then allows the sun to become a real star where nuclear fusion begins, and it begins then to provide this copious amount of energy at the rate of 3.9 times 10 to the 26th watts, 
Wow, that's just amazing. So that's what a star is. And the star basically is a big ball of gas that's in a thermal gravitational equilibrium position where the energy produced, produced, the energy produced keeps the gravity in check. If that stopped, gravity would win over and push the star into ever and ever and ever and ever smaller ball. And later on the, in the videos, some later time, we'll show you what will happen when this equilibrium point is upset and gravity begins to win over. Some very amazing things will happen to a star at that point. But anyway, these are the basics of what is, makes a star a star. It's simply a ball of gas in thermal equilibrium. And as you stick around, we'll show you some, a lot more things about the sun.